In just a few moments, David and Avani will be presenting their research on their project regarding the automated classification of benign and malignant uh, proliferative breast cancer lesions. David and Avani are both interested in applying their knowledge of computer programming to directly benefit the lives of, their pa of patients. They are especially interested in the diagnosis of diseases like breast cancer. Although they ran into problems such as unreliable results and undependable algorithms during the course of their research, they have stayed determined to take the right steps to overcome all pitfalls and continue ahead with their passion for science. Ivani has been doing science research because she enjoys delving into a particular area in detail. She is interested in bioinformatics and in understanding how computational tools can be used to solve problems in STEM. In her project last year, she also worked on improving cancer diagnosis, but with analysis of CT reports. David's first research project uh, was an engineering project in eighth grade, and from then on, he has pro progressed to the bioinformatics and machine learning fields. He's really looking forward to further research in the STEM fields, especially in computer science in college. Without further de delay, please welcome David and Avani. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Zhu. My name is Ivani Radia Dixit, and our project is on the automated classification of benign and malignant proliferative breast cancer lesions. Breast cancer is the single most common type of cancer in women. It not only accounts for about 30% of all cancers, but it also leads to 40,000 deaths per year. The most common pre-invasive breast tumor type is ductal carcinoma in C2 constituting about 83% of new cases of in-situ breast tumors. Around 50% of these DCIS cases become invasive if untreated, so early detection is crucial. This detection is done through the identification of lesions as benign usual ductal hyperplasia, UDH, or malignant DCIS. Misdiagnosis can lead to either overtreatment or undertreatment of cancer, so accurate diagnosis is crucial to ensure appropriate treatment for patients, reduce diagnosis costs, and save lives. A promising solution is the development of a robust automated classifier. Such a solution can improve the tumor diagnosis accuracy, serve as a valuable second opinion, and reduce costs. The prior work on automated diagnosis has identified morphological features from precursor lesions and then applied statistical models on these features. Dong and others had extracted features from whole slide, through whole slide image digitization and image segmentation. They then used the L1 regularized logistic regression machine learning model to differentiate between benign UDH and malignant DCIS. Their model had an 86% accuracy for cross-hospital predictions. While this is a strong performance, there are several limitations of existing studies. First, existing methods use redundant and often irrelevant features, resulting in overfitting. Overfitting occurs when the model, ident the, when the model identifies the noise of the data rather than identifying the underlying relationship. We want the model to uh, fit the data as shown in the middle graph rather than overfitting as shown in the rightmost graph. A second limitation was that many existing studies did not explore other machine learning algorithms or combinations of these algorithms. Third, most did not validate on data sets from different hospitals and hence may not generalize well. We address these limitations in our study to improve the tumor diagnosis accuracy. We did this by first analyzing multiple machine learning algorithms. We then curated our features data set to eliminate the redundant features and use only the important active features. We developed our CAFE model, combination of algorithms with active feature extraction. Finally, we validated our model with data sets from different hospitals, ensuring its generalizability. We obtained scanned images of breast biopsies of 167 samples from two different hospitals, the Massachusetts General Hospital and the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. 
From each sample, we extracted 392 features, including morphological features, such as area and perimeter, and statistical features, such as intensity and texture. We applied the six best-known machine learning algorithms, which have been used successfully and extensively in many other fields, such as image and speech recognition. These six machine learning algorithms can be broadly classified into three types. The two logistic regression models were the L1 regularized and early stopping models. The two deep learning models were the multilayer perceptron and convolutional neural network. And finally, the two decision tree models were the um, random forest and conditional inference forest. I'll go into more detail in the following slides. Both logistic regression models attempted to fit a logistic curve to the features data set by minimizing a loss function. In the L1 regularized model, um, an extra lambda parameter was incorporated that would ideally uh, keep the feature weights low and prevent overfitting. On the other hand, the early stopping model further split the training data into a training and validation set. The model would train on the training set and validate its error, its accuracy on the validation set. The model would stop training when it began, when the error in the validation set, as shown in the red curve, begins to increase, signaling an, uh, an overfitting on the um, training data set. The first deep learning model, the multi-layer perceptron, consists of three fully connected perceptron layers, where each layer passes down the most significant features to the layer beneath it. The convolutional neural network incorporates the uh, multi-layer perceptron, but also includes additional filtering and pooling layers that isolate the most significant features and reduce variation under translation. In practice, both deep learning models tend to perform better on larger data sets and may overfit on smaller ones. Finally, we had two decision tree models where each decision tree model consisted of 10,000 decision trees. Each decision tree makes a prediction on whether a given sample is UDH or DCIS based on the feature values of that sample. In the random forest method, um, each tree is given a random subset of size, of size square root of n of the features, while in the conditional inference forest, the trees are split on the, along the nodes based on information measures. After obtaining our six machine learning algorithms, we needed a reliable way of determining the accuracies of our models. We decided to use the area under the receiver operating characteristic curve, or the AUC of the ROC curve for short. This model, uh, this scoring model, allows us to determine the accuracy of the model and its confidence instead of a simple true-false ratio, giving us a more detailed understanding of our model's performance. We devised two types of AUC scores. The C-score, or cross-validation score, is the AUC obtained when our model is trained and tested on all 167 samples with tenfold cross-validation. On the other hand, the V-score, or validation score, is the AUC obtained when our model is trained on the samples of one hospital and tested on the samples of the other hospital. In practice, we expected the V-scores to be um, lower than the C-scores due to differences in uh, the image acquisition and the sample staining between the two hospitals. However, the goal in our project was to increase the values of the V-scores to as close to the C-scores as possible while maintaining a high C-score accuracy. This is because we believe the V-scores are more representative of our model's generalized ability to outside data sets since the training and testing samples are from two different institutions. In our first run of the six machine learning models, we obtained the C-score for classification with all features. The L1 regularized logistic regression model had the highest performance, a C-score of 0.931, higher than the other widely known models. We then tried various optimization techniques to improve the tumor diagnosis accuracy. We had three optimization techniques. First, we tried to reduce the algorithm variance to make more robust predictions. Second, we extracted active features to prevent overfitting. Third, we combined multiple algorithms to leverage group wisdom. Our first optimization technique was to reduce the algorithm variance. Studies often run their model once with a single random number generator, but what we found is that when that random number generator was changed, the results varied by up to 10%. To reduce this variance, we ran our algorithms 1,000 times with 1,000 random number generators. 
We then use the median of the prediction scores to prevent outliers from skewing the final prediction. We reran our six machine learning algorithms and we also reran the results of Dong and others. We did this by running their model 1,000 times. The model achieved a C-score of 0.931 and a V-score of 0.858. We then use these results as baseline numbers for comparison. Our second optimization technique was to use extracted active features. These are features with non-zero weights and are important for diagnosis. The, we extracted about 30 active features from 392 features. For example, the minor axis and the roundness of the nuclei were selected as important features, but the area and perimeter were not selected. We obtained the C-score for classification with the important active features and found that almost all the algorithms improved in performance. We then obtained the V-score for the top four performing models. The L1 regularized logistic regression model improved in performance by 4% from 0.858 to 0.897. Our third optimization technique was the combination of multiple algorithms. We combined our two logistic regression algorithms by taking the average of their predictions. We were able to develop our CAFE model combination of algorithms with active feature extraction. This combination further improved our v-score by 2% from 0.897 to 0.918. This figure compares our CAFE model to Dong et al's model. As can, as can be seen in blue, that's our model, and the existing work is in red. As can be seen, for the same false positive rate, we achieve a higher true positive rate, indicating the robustness and high accuracy of our model. To recap, we began with six existing machine learning algorithms, reduced the algorithm variance, extractive, uh, extracted active features, and finally, combined the top performing machine learning algorithms to result in our fi final CAFE model, which had a 6% improvement over previous work. This is especially significant considering that Dong and others already achieved a very high AUC of 0.86. Our 92% AUC accuracy, or 6% improvement, translates to a 45% reduction in error, from an error rate of 14% to 8%. With such a high accuracy, we are confident that our model can help pathologists confirm their diagnoses and identify cases that may require additional analysis. This is especially important considering that mammographic screening is becoming more prevalent in hospitals worldwide. So in summary, we performed the three novel machine learning optimizations of reduction of algorithm variance, extraction of active features, and combination of top performing machine learning algorithms to result in our final CAFE model, which we determined to be more reliable and robust and to generalize well to new data. In the future, we would like to obtain data from other institutions and apply big data processing techniques to further confirm the robustness of our model and to improve the classification accuracy. We would also like to improve our classifier to discriminate between low-grade and high-grade DCIS and also apply it to other types of cancer tumors and other image-based classification problems, such as muscle weakness grade and severity of cardiovascular disease. We would like to thank our mentors, Dr. Andrew Beck, Dr. Humiyun Urshad, and Dr. Sindhu Ganta for providing guidance throughout our entire project. We would also like to thank our, our school mentors, Mr. Chris Benner and Ms. Anita Chetty for all of their help and support. And finally, we would like to thank you for listening attentively today. Thank you. If any of you have any questions, uh, please feel free to raise your hand. Um, yes, Rajiv. So um, each of the models had a prediction for each sample, so that was just a, simply a number. So we combined our two logistic regression algorithms, so then we just took the average of their predictions. Well. Each, um, each of the algorithms outputted a number between 0 and 1, where 0 corresponded to DCIS and 1 corresponded to UDH. And um, 
the, it was the, the range was the likeliness. So at 0 0.5, it would be completely unsure. So what we did is we just took these numbers and took the average. We didn't want to do like fancy combinations or like add coefficients in front of them because that would pretty much mean that we were trying to overfit to the results and try to get a high accuracy, which is not scientific. Any other questions? Yes. Um, not necessarily overfitting on the C score, uh, but uh, more that the V score is expected to be lower because uh, um, the training and the testing samples um, were from different institutions, and uh, we would expect that different hospitals would process the data a little differently. So if it's learning um, from the samples of one hospital, and it looks at the samples from the other hospital, and they're all a little bit different, um, we would expect that to have a lower accuracy. That was mainly the goal of our C-score. Um, we wanted to use as much data as possible. So in their C-score, we um, used all 167 samples, and we had mixed, uh, mixed it up from both hospitals. Both hospitals had samples in both the training and the testing sets. Well, the C-score uses the cross-validation. So it's basically doing 10 folds, and it's um, separating it so it basically trains on uh, nine of the folds and then runs on the last fold and then that's switched over and so the cross validation score allows us to get use all the data as well as use the data from both hospitals yeah because it's using both the data from both hospitals are there yeah mm -hmm. were irrelevant. So we found that some of the features, uh, for example, like the area and perimeter of the nuclei were not as relevant in comparison, like for example, to the minor axis and roundness. And so what we predicted is that often the active features used the um, irrelevant features in the calculation. So for example, the minor axis would be using um, maybe like the perimeter to make that calculation. So those were redundant features that were necessary to make the prediction. Um, the question was, uh, why would we have to remove some of the features if the L1 regularized model was already setting some of the feature values to zero? So um, that's, we kind of thought, uh, we were kind of thinking that as well, why would we have to do that if the model is already going to do it for us? And what we found out is that um, the, if we plug in 392 features into the model, um, it's, it still gets a little bit confused, and it um, when we give it such a large amount of data, um, the output will invariably be um, a little larger than, so like the first time around we got about 20 active features, um, but then what we did was we took those 20 active features and we plugged them back in, um, and it gave us even more active features, about 12 or so, um, and these are the most active of the active features, and they actually provided us with better results. Um, yeah. So what we actually tried was we attempted to use the convolutional neural network onto the raw images themselves. And unfortunately, our result was the model consistently predicted DCIS for every single sample. And why we think this is the case is because if we look at the images themselves, so there's an example of an image right there. Um, first of all, there's not really any orientation. Um, the cells can be scattered around the entire image. And often a DCIS and UDH sample, two images, can look very similar. 
um, where, but a DCIS and another DCIS sample could look different just because of the, of the location from where the image was taken. Um, so we think, um, in, at least in the image standpoint, um, we were not successful. But we did not actually tr try to get the image to learn the actual features from scratch. Um, but we all think that might be a little difficult as well, um, considering that we had to extract the features from the images, which we had a hard time working with. All right, um, I think that'll be it for today. Okay, um, yeah, we are running a little bit out of time. Thank you so much, David and Vani, for your wonderful presentation. And thank you all for attending and being here at Symposium today. So we will now be moving into breakout session number four, uh, which features more student talks. And there will also be a special session talk right here in the auditorium with Omer Archon. Thank you.